Hi, I'm Desi Serna, author of Fretboard Theory, Guitar Theory for Dummies, and Guitar Rhythm and Technique for Dummies. In this free guitar lesson, I'm going to show you how I play some of the parts from the song Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. This lesson is suitable for experienced beginners to intermediate level players on up. You can follow along with free guitar tab. To get it, just go to the link in the video description. To get my sound for this song, I'm using a Paul Reed Smith DGT guitar. I'm on the bridge humbucker. I'm plugged into a Fender Pro Junior amplifier, and I've got the volume set low at about two, so it's very clean. It's not breaking up. It's a good platform for a distortion pedal. And I'm using a Visual Sound Son of Hyde distortion pedal. And I'm actually not using the speaker on the uh, Fender amp. I'm plugged into this Rivera Silent Sister isolation cabinet, and it's got a 12-inch Celestion Vintage 30 in it. I'm adding a little reverb from my mixer, and here's what my guitar sounds like. All right, so let's get started. Make sure you have the free tab in front of you. I've got it in front of me, and I'll be referring to it uh, as I teach here. So I'm just going to show you part of the <coughs> intro. There's some different rhythm figures that you hear in the intro. I'll talk about how you could appro approach the chords in the verse, which are played on keyboards. I'll show you how you could approach them on guitar. And then I'm going to show you the chorus, and that's pretty much it. So let's take a look at the beginning of the tab. The first thing that you hear is, uh, <coughs> well, I should point out that this song is uh, in the key of C minor. So that's kind of the tonal center of the song. And the first thing you hear in the song is just the root C played as 16th notes, uh, palm muted, like this. And if this is new to you, let me explain that when I palm mute, I place, uh, <coughs> I kind of karate chop my guitar here and place the side of my hand on the bridge and I roll up onto the string so that instead of the string uh, ringing uh, uh, fully, it's damped. It's damped like this. <coughs> it might be a good idea to try just playing down strokes first. Here's without the palm mute. Here's with it. You want to make sure that you don't dampen it too much, so you might have to just move your hand to find that right position. And once you get used to playing some eighth notes using just down strokes, you can then try alternating your pick, which if you haven't done this before, can be a little tricky. It takes some time to get used to, so it's a technique that you'll want to work on. This part actually uh, continues all the way through the intro, and I believe it even continues through the verses. And uh, <coughs> I actually used to have students use this as an exercise to develop their alternate picking technique and their palm muting technique. So if you're up for the challenge, uh, once you get this technique down, you can try playing along with the song and just keep it going for, um, for as long as you can. All right, next we're going to move on to what I call rhythm figure two. It begins at measure three. And this is where the guitar comes in with those distorted power chords and plays that power chord riff that everyone's familiar with. <laughs> Uh, pretty simple stuff here. Uh, a beginner could probably play this. So you're just playing power chords. Um, you can play root, fifth, octave, or you could play root, fifth if you just want to do the two note variety. That's fine. So you've got C, you're using uh, B flat, and then you use a G, and you use an A flat as well. You want to pay attention to when the power chords are struck on the beat and when they're off the beat. So listen carefully here. One, two, three, four. All right, so that was beginning at measure three, and I played through measure four, five, and six. Now let's jump down to measure seven. I call this rhythm figure three. Um, it's the same part that we just played, but some of those notes are rhythmically dis displaced, so they fall in a different part of the beat. Listen to this carefully. So um, it starts out the same here with the C and the B flat. 
But then here's where things get uh, tricky. So we move into measure eight here. And if you maybe look at the staff, uh, the system up above it, the first time you played it, notice that you had you beat on you rest on beats one and two, and then you hit that C power chord on beat three. But then if you jump down to this, I'm talking about rhythm figure two, and then when you jump down to rhythm figure three in measure eight, you rest on beats one and two, but then you also have an eighth rest on beat two. So that means that the the C power chord comes on the upbeat. And then from there, the riff is the same, but again, everything is displaced. Everything's been moved over an eighth note. So in rhythm figure two, the first version, it's one, two. <laughs> but in rig rhythm figure three, the second version, it's one, two, and, whoops, one, one, two, three. <laughs> Let me see if I can explain that again. Rhythm figure two, first version, that C chord comes right in on beat three. One, two, B flat on the upbeat, and the C on the upbeat there. Um, rhythm figure three, second time, C comes in on the upbeat, and you come back to it. So. You know, if you just listen carefully and play through it a few times uh, and pay attention to when chords fall on the beat and off the beat, you'll get it. Just don't make the mistake of assuming that it's the same both times. It is not. Now, later in the song, when this part is reprised, they play it the same way each time. So only in this intro do they displace the part again. So let me play now from measure 3 all the way uh, through the end of measure 10. Listen carefully to how it changes the second time. Here we go. One, two, three, four. It's actually a little trickier than that because there's some 16th notes involved there. I said the upbeat, but actually, you're, you know, um, you've got 16th notes there. I don't want to get into all those details. I think if you just tap your foot and listen and play, I think you'll get it. And I might confuse you if I talk about it any more than that. All right, so work on that. Once you're comfortable, we'll move on to the next part. All right, next we're going to take a look at rhythm figure four. This begins in measure 11. And it's played over the same part that you just played. Um, but this particular guitar moves up and plays some of the chords slight in a slightly different manner, up in a different position, and it sounds like this. <laughs> Nothing's displaced here. Um, this follows the rhythm of uh, rhythm figure two. So you start on C, and then you're going to follow the chord changes C, B flat C, but you're going to come up here and you're going to play part of a C minor 7. You're going to play just these three strings, 2, 3, and 4. And then here's your B flat, and you're going to play just strings 2, 3, and 4. So it's instead of it's so from the beginning of this section. And then you end the same way down here with power chords. And when you come up here, as I listen to the recording, I heard some scratching. So it was. You could try working that in. It's not terribly critical, but it kind of gives it a cool pop, you know. And I also heard a little bit of vibrato. So when you come back to that C minor 7, you can kind of wiggle it if you are able. All right, so we've gotten through the main uh, introduction with that power chord riff and some of the, the other parts. Now I want to talk about the verse. 
during the verse, uh, there's no distorted guitar. You do hear that palm muted 16th note continue, and then you hear the keyboard play some chords. Let me show you what those chords are, because you can play them on guitar. They are, and you see this in the tab, beginning in measure 15, the verse. They are C minor, A flat, B flat, and then back to C minor. And it just repeats. These chords are actually right out of the E flat major scale. You're playing the relative minor, uh, C minor. If you're counting these in relationship to the E minor scale, this would be six, um, four, five, six. Maybe it's easier to look at them here. Uh, six, four, five, six, and there's one. Or if you want to, since you're in a minor key, if you want to count the minor tonic as one, this would be one, uh, this would be flat six, flat seven, one. And that would probably be mo more accurate because your ear is hearing, your ear is hearing C as one. Okay, so those are the chords, but if you listen to the music, there's actually uh, a pedal tone technique being applied here where you can hear bass note, the C bass notes are sustained during those chord changes, and it's got a neat sound. And you could do the same thing with the guitar, too. Let me show you. So what you can do is play the C minor, the A flat and the B flat, but hold the C note here throughout all of the chords, like this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move to A flat, but I want to keep C in the bass. So I'm going to keep my first finger here in C, and I need to figure out how can I grab part of that A chord, and I do it like this with these three fingers, and I keep C right there. So that's A flat slash C. So C minor, A flat slash C. Then I want to go to B flat, but I want to keep C uh, in the bass. This is easy. All the notes will be in the same fret here. So C minor, A flat slash C, B flat slash C, and then back to C minor. If you wanted to, um, an extra challenge, you could try keeping the 16th notes on the C going the whole time, like this. There isn't actually a guitar in the song doing that, but I just kind of put that uh, part together. It's a composite part drawn on what you hear the instrumentation doing. Okay, there's one more part that I want to cover here. That's the chorus uh, in the song, and it starts at measure 23 in my tab, and it sounds like this. Then that repeats, and then you have this um, uh, kind of minor scale with a little chromatic half-step movement in it that sounds like this. So let's take a closer look at this uh, measure 23. So you got an F power chord here. Then you're going to go to a B flat chord, and here's a B flat in A form. If you grab the fourth fret of the second string, that would make a B flat suspended fourth. You have removed the third or suspended it and added in the fourth. And in fact, you're just going to play the root here on the third string, B flat, and this fourth. So I, I just play those two notes. But I wanted to show you where those notes come from. And then your pinky's going to drop a fret to the major third of the B flat chord. So that's B, su B flat, sus4 to B flat. And you can put a couple of uh, muted strokes before it, like this. I like to use these fingers for this part rather than others, because <coughs> I like to keep other fingers back here to help with the muting and keeping the strings quiet while these notes ring. So you got.
from here, you go back to the F power chord. Then you have a C power chord and a B flat power chord. And then you go through those changes again. Actually, I lied. You don't go through that part again. It's cut short because you have this final part along the fourth string. That's fret three, two, three, five, three, five, six. Um, this is all out of the C minor scale, which is relative to E flat, except for that E natural right there. So that's just kind of a chromatic sort of little chromatic movement there. So here's the whole uh, chorus again. Here we go. And that's as far as I'm going to take you. I just wanted to show some of those parts. <clears throat> you could probably piece together the rest of the song just knowing that. So um, some great things here to draw from this song. Um, I like the use of the different chord shapes and voicings. I like the, uh, the suspension there. I like the alternate picking technique uh, or the opportunity to develop some alternate picking technique while uh, alternating. And this is, you know, just a classic song and an iconic uh, power chord riff. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this free guitar lesson. If you would like to learn more about music theory for guitar, including guitar scales, chords, progressions, modes, and more, then visit my website at guitar-music-theory.com. That's guitar music theory with dashes in between the words. When you get there, you can sign up to join my email list, you can receive some free materials, and you can preview my full theory courses that I offer. Well, thanks for watching. Please click like on this video and leave me some positive comments.